standing on the west side of my house um, kind of looking into the back of the garden and you see some hosta and um, Japanese anemone and different hosta and these are this is a species iris that has not bloomed yet you can see that it's got uh, it's got blooms coming up on it but uh, anyway as you turn you can see looking towards the towards the street view let me see my eastern redbud here um, and you see lots of species iris right here there's uh, Ruth Wilder and contraband girl it's Ruth Wilder on this side um, you can see different some Japanese painted fern and and uh, some more hosta and Yuchera. Anyway, not not you still. This is still a work in progress. Obviously, this is Ruth Wilder. You can see the the little narrow band on the leaf, and then you can obviously see the difference here with contraband girl, the width on the leaf, and that sort of thing. And then we've got some golden uh, spirea getting ready to to bloom here. Got some little flowers coming up on it, and a rose of Sharon here, and then of course a. Uh, snowball verburnum over here and then behind me um, here you see this is incredible hydrangea back here I've got a good variety of hydrangea that I've been working on um, and then coming around the back here we have uh, some more hosta and th that is uh, black onyx hydrangea uh, it's the only variety that has a black stem you can see the black stem on it there it gets a white ball um, obviously oak leaf hydrangea um, this is a vanilla crinum gosh it smells so good when it when it blooms this is from Africa Jacus Ratayali is I think is how you say that um, endless summer and then you can see there's two more hydrangeas down here there's a different variety you can kind of see the difference in the leaf this is what they call um, shooting star or f I've also heard it called Fuji waterfall and some peony coming up you can see here this uh, cedar and then of course coming around to the front of my house and the front of the garden lots of the iris bearded iris have gone now they've already they've already bloomed out and I've got some Sun coming here behind me a landscape rose and I'll, um, you can see lots of lots of lilies are coming up uh, they're pink they'll bloom and of course lots of iris back here there's some Siberian iris and lots of daylilies that yet of course haven't bloomed yet um, mud daisies are starting to come up and some different things uh, let's see see there's you can start to see them putting up their heads uh, a couple blooming now and some different just dianthus and things in there and my window boxes and you can see here a pot that I have in the front and you can see you can see a couple daisies blooming right here and some lipstick stage and then there's some uh, some onion that hasn't bloomed yet and more daylilies and again this is uh, this is my sort of my front garden in the house um, this is that uh, Palita coneflower. Um, so I love it. It's just so interesting. And this is uh, this is hadn't quite fully bloomed yet, but this is what they call Carolina lupine. Um, and it's very tall, kind of gets tall, and has these little yellow flowers. Aren't lots of lots of lilies yet to come? And of course, there's a there's a pink coneflower, and then lots of catnip, nepeta, um, some more lilies that are going to bloom and. And then my fountain in the front. And I, what I'll do is I'll, I'll kind of, I'll kind of swing around here and back up, and and then you can get a better, better image of what the front looks like across the front of the house here. Um, you can kind of see where we just came from around the garden, and and then uh, you know we've got some different, different things in pots. Lots of ice plant, which I love. And uh, it's blooming out, and uh, more of it, 
Here's my rice plant. And uh, it's starting to close up for the night. <laughs> Actually, um, you know, it goes in at the night. And then I'm going to walk around my truck here. Got it parked outside. And lots of daylilies here. This is Thy True Love. It just puts on a show every year when it blooms. It's just beautiful. Um, so I got different things mixed in here. Here's some gladiolus, Byzantine gladiolus. These are the really old variety. Um, lots of lilies in here that are going to come up. You can kind of see they're starting to come up here. And uh, Azalea. More daylily. And then as you can see, I've got some swamp sunflower here and this is limelight hydrangea you see how tall it is actually this is up at my height um and over here we have um gosh i'm trying to think uh, indigo fera and uh, and then of course these are these are a different hydrangea they have a white panicle flower they're just uh, they love the sun and um you can see my rose arbor is kind of coming into the back garden here. And this is sort of a staging area for me, to be honest with you. Uh, and here we go. Um, see, so you can see different things. You can see how, how massive this rose is. This is uh, Mrs. B.R. Cant. It's in a very old rose. It doesn't have scent. Um, this is Bluebird. Hydrangea has not bloomed yet, but I love it. Um, and, of course, we've got pasta here that's madam Wu. she's very young but starting to put up some good leaf and some hibiscus swamp hibiscus coming up and toad lily and oxalis um there's some elegans and and then a swing back here to the other side there's there's a massive elegans back in here that i've divided several times and some few chairs hidden under there different varieties and a big oak leaf and constant spry david austin rose is on my arbor that enters the uh, into the garden. You can see she's just getting ready to bloom. She's very young, she's only a couple years old. Um, and of course, my bell, I and mean, people come into the garden and this is just about bloomed out, the red honeysuckle. Um, there's a little bit more blooming up top. And then uh, the birds are nesting in my mailbox, the wrens. <laughs> And uh, anyway, you can see some crinum there. And down here, some false spirea. Putting up some heads now. And this is a smooth leaf hydrangea. It's really tall. Puts out some big, long, tall, tall limbs. And, and then you can see, obviously, some different things on the right coming in. And um, just stay lilies that haven't, obviously, haven't bloomed yet. And, uh, and a big... I had to trim this back, but a big oak leaf hydrangea here on the left. Um, and a little apple tree. And some different bearded iris and things. And, and then we walk right directly into what is really blooming well now. Um, of course, is my yellow moonlight baptisia. And the sun's striking it, so it looks almost white. But it's a soft yellow. And the blue variety... It's just now coming up. It's next door to it. Um, and then this is my iris garden here. Uh, this is my Louisiana iris garden. And you can see there are different ones blooming now. Uh, the big tall white one is Barbara Elaine Taylor. Um, this one this one is just getting ready. I'm going to walk into, I have a little creek bed that runs in here, a dry creek bed. This one's just opening now. Um, and I'm trying to remember that. This is simply fantastic. It hasn't quite opened yet. And you can see some different ones in the back. And these really tall white ones I love. And there's some different different varieties. All different varieties of Louisiana iris. Copper. And there's a, there's a one I'm waiting for. Yellow zest. You can see how yellow that is. I'm waiting for that one to open. Um, lots of white Acadian mists here. And Louis Armstrong. <laughs> so anyway, you can see how tall these are. I'm really walking right by this. It's actually beyond about my waist height. It's about 42 inches. 
Um, and, and over here is a little bit of a shade garden. I'll come back to that. So again, I'm going to kind of step back and you can see where it came from. And this is my Louisiana iris garden. And then um, there's more. There's little copper iris blooming. These are, these are Japanese um, Yoshina cherries. They've already bloomed out for the year. And then, of course, this is all bearded iris that is pretty much pretty much bloomed out there's a few left they've pretty much come and gone will satchel and there's uh there's some more over here and got some some of the big tall tiger lilies um, that have come over here and and then uh different 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 types of bushes here this is a chinese fringe it's a white chinese fringe bush and there's uh, another verburnum that's the uh, snow drift verburnum, and then I've got some some peonies. Actually, ones I guess is laying down on the ground down there, and I'm trying to get out of the sun here. But there's some peonies yet to bloom, and some some just some different things. Um, I put some in this year. Let's see some some dahlias, and there's some Daphne Daphne blooming. And I love this Barbary. Barbary, I think it is, is called. I love that purple, reddish purple color. Um, really hacked this back this year. Um, there's a, you know, some bluebird one. Last little bloom on the columbine. There's some pink. And this one's kind of just re-blooming a little bit of different variety. Some more daylily. Some foxglove. That's foxglove in the front. Little Chinese orchids. Ground orchids are starting to bloom. And there's right here, it hasn't bloomed yet, but that's meadow rue, and then, and then there's some, you can see them down in there, they're climbing, I've got them climbing on this pole here, um, some different kind of uh, clematis. And you can see my rose arbor, this one bloomed early, so it's just about finished now. It's a very soft pink, turns almost a blush white, that's Madame Alfred Carrier, it's an uh, 1800s. And then you can kind of see Golden Gate up through there blooming. I moved it over here this year. Carolina Test Out is just now starting to come up and put out her buds and bloom. She's starting to bloom. And then you can see right here at the bottom of my, next to the fountain, right here, I've got lots of very tall lilies, Orion pets that get probably six, seven, eight feet tall. Um, and my little my little chicken down in there. Um, anyway, you can see there's Bolero rose, very very perfumed rose. Um, and pots here under my little my little pergola area. You can see the a, a very large hosta in the back. And I'll, I'll walk back here. Sun's pretty bright, even though it's late afternoon. And you can see another. Elegance hosta, fairly large. Um, flat leaf parsley is now about chest height on me. I'm actually letting it go to flower. And then I've got some different things in here, some peppers, and you know, just a few things, some different peppers and bell pepper and zucchini and some cucumber and just a little bit of spinach, which is left. There's not much of that left. And then my fig, fairly tall fig tree. It's getting pretty big. Um, love my fig. Anyway, I'll turn around. I'll come back from around here and uh, see some different things. This is kind of my working area back here. And uh, Spirea. It's bloomed already white. And there's a whole bunch in here. Um, so I'll, I know the sun is very bright. But you can see more daylily. And there's some more lilies. These white tigers. I love them. They, I love the white tigers. And some more dahlias that I put in this year. See how they do. Um, anyway, my pots. So I'm going to kind of walk around. You can see where I've kind of show you where I've come from. And I'll come back this way to the back of the garden. Um, I'm in the north, facing north basically now. Um, some of my feeders back here. And different kinds of more lilies and and uh, my daylily. First one is putting up some heads. I don't know 
what type that is. I'll have to wait till it blooms to see. But there's some more, more hosta back in there. Um, all flowering almond. And then this is a this I love this cone flower. This is a native species of cone flower. It gets about probably f five feet tall and gets a yellow cone flower on the top. Just um, it's just beautiful. I, I kind of put some more around here, and uh, and you can see them here. There's some more, and uh, so I'm excited to see this bloom this year. This this blooms every year, um, and most of the bearded ice are already gone. There's a a little bit of an immortality left, and this one is still blooming. That's wild Apache. Then I'll, I'll back out a little bit. You can kind of see see the border here. Um, anyway, different things. Um, more Crinum and and then Hymenicalis, right? Or what they call I think I think commonly called Peruvian Lily, and uh, Pink Spirea back here. That's going to bloom. It's already starting to bloom now. Open its little flowers, and. Uh, Anito peony, eh, more cat mint, and some phlox, and different things back here. These are two ceruleus iris back here, uh, blue and the white. Um, Neomerica, that's what they call them. You can see I have everything tagged, hymenicalis, and then some verbena, trailing verbena, and some more dahlias I put in. Um, and then some peonies, different peonies, and some more iris. Most of them have already bloomed out. This is the back of the kind of the back of the fence. Here's an here's an immortality that's still blooming. And again, more lilies in the back of the garden. Um, that's black cohosh in the back. Gets a long, tall, white flower on it. Um, rows of flowers. Futura. It's a rose azalea, some more meadow rue, and then, and then of course here's a, this is a this is a rose I kind of got on a hook. It's about bloomed out now. A little tiny, little tiny tiny roses, beautiful little roses. And my bird bath and more iris coming around. Um, and so I'll kind of shoot. I'll kind of turn, and you can see. Um, so excited to see my dahlias this year and things bloom. This is another little eastern redwood. You can see my fire pit and, and where we came from back of the yard. You can see it's kind of bright. Starting the sun starting to go down behind the trees here. So I tried to pick a time of day where it wasn't so bright. And lipstick sage here. And then a little Japanese coral bark maple. Um, it's a very young tree. Just put it in. And a little rose I've got on the fence back there. It's very old. It's a uh, Saint Germain rose. It's old, and I'm waiting to see how it's going to do. It's the first year in the ground. And some different iris in here. You can see some different iris. And uh, anyway, a little apple tree, crab apples. And uh, anyway, you can see the you can see the little little tiny crab apples on them. Um, and then a lot of crenum, and these these are Japanese iris. That's an eastern flag iris back there. And this is an area that I'm kind of working on here. There's more Japanese. These are all Japanese iris. They're getting ready to start to put up their heads. You can kind of see here. If they're all different uh, varieties, and and of course this is just about now bloomed out. All right, a Zephyr drawn rose, very old rose. Beautiful colors though. It's a beautiful rose. As they come around, you can kind of see see almost one laying on the ground here um, here's immortality or immortal Juno I'm sorry beautiful rose really beautiful scent and this is teasing Georgia and again I'll kind of come I'll back up a little bit you can see is this my little arbor that comes into the side over here to my deck another little side garden so to speak and you can see my dutsia. I need to trim it up. Um, but dutsia is getting ready to bloom and it smells so good. It's just got the most beautiful blooms. It's just covered with blooms that haven't opened yet. You can see just the masses of blooms on it. It's so pretty when it blooms. Um, and the wajuya is actually already bloomed out. I had some pictures of that. There's a little bit of flower left on the the wajaya, but it was just covered this year. 
Uh, my dogwood, pink dogwood Cherokee. More azalea, and then they've got Henry, another uh, tall iris. It's an orange variety, and then I've got some toad lily packed in there. And these are these are uh, Hadicium. Trying to remember, and Bishop. Just some really pretty stuff. And there's a big elegance, and right next to it, which is just really coming out of the ground, is some in substance, which you can see it's going to be a it's a big one. Um, this is very much shade, as a little shade garden back in here. Um, yeah. So anyway, come back around, you can see going up on my deck here. Uh, more lilies, some clematis still blooming. This one has done good this year. Lots of little tiger lilies coming up. You can see the. The little seeds on them and some daylilies I'm putting in different kinds there's different kinds of daylilies in here and some onion that blooms and they'll come back through the arbor and walk along the back I love this I love this onion I love how it's uh, it just puts out these blooms these weird looking uh, blooms it's so interesting um, and a lot, this is just loaded with daylilies. Obviously, haven't bloomed. This, this really bloomed. This clematis, clematis really bloomed well this year. You can kind of see here's, and this is, it's more of a blue. Unfortunately, this looks purple in the, in the video. And, and then this is a Mount Mount Calve rose. She's blooming. And she's, I've already had to cut off several blooms, but she's got more, more coming. So, very old rose. And lots of lots of interesting stuff coming around here. More iris. Um, this is what they call wall iris, pond iris. Um, you can see they're really blooming well. It's a pretty little iris. Again, they're more blue. This shows it as kind of a purple, but it's actually more blue. Um, and there's some more Louisiana iris tucked in there by my creek bed. And you can see more iris, and see this one's getting ready to bloom. I don't know what it's going to be. And then I've got azalea back here. I just trimmed some today. And you can see how tall these Orient Pet lilies are. This is Scheherazade. And then Stokes Aster hadn't bloomed yet, but it's getting ready. It's starting to put up its heads. And lots of different things in here. Some others, Asters. There's a wine and roses with Julia it's already kind of bloomed out and uh, you can see this is a this is a native flag iris here and some flocks more day different kinds of daylilies coming along here and you can kind of see in there and see up against near the house there's hydrangea mixed in here and this is all under a vitex vitex tree and you see I'm kind of coming back around two different kinds of hydrangeas called peppermint hydrangea um, and different I think that's guacamole pasta I don't know I think so and different some different iris that have yet to bloom Siberians and again lots of different cone flowers are kind of coming up through here you can see the cone flower and uh, you can see the two heads right here St. Joseph's lily and lots of bee balm uh, so Anyway, interesting stuff. Coming back around here, you can see, see some of my bromeliads and, and some more hosta and then some geranium and some more false spirea in here. And there's some other things starting to come through. Um, so anyway, lots of endless summer hydrangea. They just are so pretty when they bloom. And uh, so anyway, you can kind of, I'm going to kind of pan back. You can see, kind of sit up on the, we just sit up on the deck and have dinner. And it's so nice, so peaceful. It's such a pleasant day. It's, uh, it's just such a pleasant, beautiful day out here in the garden. And I just, I just really enjoy it. Um, and Rachel, I say once again, I really enjoy, I always enjoy hearing your accent. Yeah, um, it's just so fun. And I hope you enjoyed the tour.